So in this final segment, I want to talk more about the ambiguity problem and give you some examples of how ambiguity comes up in the kind of grammar that I've just shown you. Okay, so the first source of ambiguity we're going to consider is part of speech ambiguity. And this is actually something we saw with the lectures on part of speech tagging earlier in this course. It corresponds to the observation that many words in English can take multiple possible parts of speech. So here's one example. The word duck can be a singular noun, but it can also be an intransitive verb. So it's ambiguous for its part of speech. These types of part of speech ambiguity frequently lead to multiple possible parse structures for a particular sentence. And I've shown you uh, two examples of a verb phrase structure for the string saw her duck with the telescope down here. So in this first structure, duck is a singular noun. And this structure basically corresponds to the interpretation where somebody is seeing the duck using the telescope to see the duck. Let's look at this second structure. In this case, we have duck as an intransitive verb. And actually, we have her duck as a sentence embedded within this verb phrase. It's in fact, the sentence is an argument to the verb saw, forming a VP here. This interpretation basically corresponds to the interpretation where I'm seeing somebody duck using the telescope to see that person duck. So here I have a real duck in the world, and here I have somebody ducking. Okay, so you see these two different interpretations. So that's uh, a first source of ambiguity, part of speech ambiguity. A second source is prepositional phrase attachment. I'll just recap. We had this example from early on in this lecture where I have the sentence, I drove down the road in the car. And I noticed that we had two possible structures for this sentence, one where in the car is modifying drove. And this corresponds to the natural interpretation where I'm driving in the car. But as we said, there's a second somewhat crazy interpretation where the road is actually located in the car. And in that case, the prepositional phrase is actually underneath this noun phrase. So I want to give a second example of a prepositional phrase attachment ambiguity, which I think um, illustrates an interesting property. So here we have a sentence, John was believed to have been shot by Bill. And um, the most plausible interpretation has Bill doing the shooting. So this preposi prepositional phrase, by Bill, modifies uh, shot, essentially. Okay, so uh, somebody believes that um, Bill shot John. There is actually a second interpretation here, which is much uh, less intuitive, at least for humans, which is that by Bill, this prepositional phrase modifies the uh, verb believe. So let's actually just paraphrase these two uh, interpretations. The first is that um, Bill shot John. Somebody believes that Bill shot John. And the second interpretation has Bill believed that John has been shot. So this prepositional phrase by Bill can modify shot, corresponding to the reading that Bill has been doing the shooting, or it can modify believed, where Bill is doing the, the believing. What's interesting about this example is that it shows that there's a very strong preference by humans for prepositional phrases to modify the most recent verb. So both of these interpretations, Bill doing the shooting or believing, are quite plausible as states of the world. So using a priori beliefs about what is likely in the world, either of them looks quite plausible. And yet humans have a very strong preference for the shooting interpretation. And the reason behind that is that there's a strong preference for prepositions to modify the most recent verb in a sentence. So let's move on to another example of ambiguity using the grammar I just uh, showed you. And this concerns noun pre-modifiers. So I think earlier in these slides, I showed you this structure, or something very similar to this structure. So here we have the sequence of words, the fast car mechanic. And actually, 
here we have an n bar over fast car. And this structure corresponds to the interpretation where we have a mechanic who works on fast cars. Okay, so it's a mechanic who, uh, whose specialty is fast cars, for example. Okay, because we have fast car as an entire subphrase pre-modifying mechanic. But under the grammar I showed you, we have a second structure which I've shown you here. And in this case, we have a car mechanic who is fast. So this adjective modifies this entire substring car mechanic. Okay, so it's a car mechanic who, in addition, is fast. So two ambiguity, uh, an ambiguity here. Is it a mechanic who works on fast cars, or is it a car mechanic who is fast? And we end up with two different structures. This kind of ambiguity within noun pre-modifiers is absolutely uh, prevalent, and you see it everywhere in sentences in English and other languages.